Good afternoon. This presentation is about V-mail, not email. V-mail was a system for delivering mail during World War II. V-mail was printed as V dot 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 dash mail. That's V in Morse code, and V was for victory. This is also a story about a special soldier and Waitley son named Marshall Ross Pease. This comes about from the generosity of Marshall's son, John Pease, who recently donated his father's 90 or so V-mail letters and other materials to the Waitley Historical Society. John and his J wife, Jane, are here today. Thank you for coming. <coughs> Marshall Pease was born in 1920 to Marshall Rufus Pease and Mar Marion Pease, nay Ross. Marshall was drafted in July 1942, after the U.S. entered World War II. He was ordered to report for duty to Fort Devens, Mass. on October 7, 1942, just after he turned 22. He used the V-mail system to exchange letters with his parents while he was serving in the military police. According to an Army history site, his 170th military police company was known as the Dragon Slayers, and they were based in Egypt. Fortunately for Marshall, the fiercest fighting was largely over in Egypt and Northern Africa by the first part of 1943. An early V-mail letter in the collection is from October 21st, 1943. What I will read from his letters are all excerpts. Despite their small size, Marshall packed a lot into each one. Dear Ma and Dad, we boys are pretty busy just at present, but I managed to write in between. I was issued a good conduct ribbon, being in the Army one year and no bad marks against me. So you see, I've been a good soldier. Payday is looking us in the eye. Sure is good it's near. Money here doesn't last as long as it would in the States. Brush my teeth every day and shave. That's the army, plenty of soap and water. Well, I'll say so long till tomorrow. I'm waiting for the pictures you promised. God bless you and thinking of you always and miss you both. Lots of love, Marshall. What was V-mail? To understand that, we have to go back to the beginning of World War II, before the Americans joined. The lead up to the war began in the early 1930s. By then, Germany, but then Germany invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939. Two days later, Great Britain and France honored their earlier guarantee to Poland and declared war on Germany. In the early part of World War II, the Ministry of Transport in Great Britain had difficulty maintaining the postal services for troops stationed in the Middle East. The situation became much worse after the French surrendered to Germany in June of 1940 and the Mediterranean regions and key parts of North Africa came under the control of Germany and its allies, including Italy. At that point, the short route from the Atlantic, the Suez Canal, was closed. Air travel was still young. The first transatlantic service carrying mail and passengers had only started in 1939. Cargo space for mail by air was limited. As a result, mail to and from the near and far east was taking three to six months by a ship around the southern tip of Africa. Kodak Limited had approached the British Post Office in 1932 about using the Kodak microfilm system, Recordac, to reduce the cost of sending mail. The system had been used since the early 1930s for record keeping in banks and other businesses. By 1940, anything to help the war effort was worth trying. From that, air graph was invented. And that's an air graph British World War II poster. The Kodak office in Cairo, Egypt, already had the equipment required to photograph letters. Thus, the air graph service began from Cairo on April 21, 1941. The first air graphs arrived in London three weeks later. The first shipment consisted of 70,000 letters. By the second month, over a half million letters were sent home. Getting London up to set to transmit was more complicated. The first air graph from the UK was sent in August 1941 by Liz Queen Elizabeth, the mother of the then 15-year-old who had become Queen Elizabeth II. That air graph was sent to the commander-in-chief of the Middle East forces. The United States entered World War II immediately after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The U.S. government quickly also realized the importance of mail in the war effort. 
The volume of mail sent back and forth between the troops and home soon became difficult to handle for the Postal Service and the military branches. 150,000 single-page letters sent at the start of the war took 37 mail bags to carry and weighed over a ton. That took up cargo space that was needed on ships and planes to transport troops and equipment and vital supplies. So in June of 1942, the Post Office, the War Department, and the Navy Department implemented V-Mail based on the successful British aircraft system. How did V-Mail actually work? The sender of the V-Mail letter had to use a special form produced by the government and later by private companies. <coughs> they were available for purchase but supplied <coughs> free to service personnel. They were eight and a half by 11 and came with instructions on how to fill out the form. Service people could send them for free, but members of the public had to pay normal postage, which was three cents for service mail and six cents for airmail. Paying extra for airmail only impacted how the mail traveled in the US. After that, it went into the military mail system. Nothing could be included in V-mails, no photos, news clippings, etc. Airmail was still used for enclosures. Mail to all military personnel was sent to an Army Post Office, or APO, or Fleet Post Office, FPO, address, either in New York City or San Francisco. The V-mail service began out of New York on June 15, 1942, and about a month later out of San Francisco. At the Military Mail Processing Center, the letter would first be opened and censored. Censorship of both military and civilian mail was necessary to prevent sensitive information from reaching the enemy. Any questionable information would be blacked out or even cut away. Every letter was marked with an examiner or censor hand, ship, hand stamp and then sorted by destination. <laughs> After the initial process, letters going to the same location were sent through microfilming equipment and copied onto rolls of 16 millimeter film one roll of film held about 1,500 letters oh. and weighed seven ounces. Oh. About two pounds of microfilm replaced 114 pounds of letters. Oh. The paper letters were destroyed after they were microfilmed, but a copy of the microfilm was saved just in case the original reel didn't make it to the destination. In the field, APO and FPO mail centers were mobile and went along with the troops. Most could process V-mail. When a roll of V-mail microfilm was received, it was processed back into letter form and printed on photo paper at a quarter of its original size, about four and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. That miniaturized letter was put into a special V-mail envelope and delivered to the soldier. Here's a sample of the letter and the envelope with my pen by it to show a size comparison. The process was reversed for V-mail coming into the U.S. Those were processed for delivery through one of three centers. New York was number one, San Francisco two, Chicago three. The cancellations only contained a number, not the location. Once through the processing center, they were passed along to the Postal Service for delivery. Marshall Pease's letters to his parents each contained the examiner stamp, the Postal Service number one cancellation mark, meaning New York, and the date. We only have letters that Marshall P. sent home to his parents. Marshall told his parents that soldiers were required to destroy the letters they received after a month. That was for security reasons. So very few V-mail letters to the soldiers remain today. But the letters from home meant the world to Marshall. May 26, 1944, Marshall, V-mail, Dear Ma and Dad, I received three V-mail three v letters today and sure was glad to get them. They were the first I got all week. I sure miss you folks, and every letter I get from home means a lot. I'm fine, I'm in the best of health, and hope you are both the same, including the rest of the family. The weather is still hot, but I'm getting used to it fast. I'm always thinking about you and miss you both. God bless you and best of health to all, with lots of love, Marshall. What did Marshall talk about in the letters? He talked about the weather and what the boys did to entertain themselves on base. They could go to movies, play cards, dice, and other games. June 1st, 1944, Marshall, V-mail. Dear Ma and Dad, I received three V-mails and sure was glad to get them. I sure do miss all of you. Payday was yesterday and everybody's happy. 
cards and dice and whatnot. I have to work, so I still have my money. I'm, I'm sending home a money order for 20 tonight. Let me know when you get it. As I said before, no use to spend your money foolish. I'm always thinking about you and miss you both. God bless you all, and best of health to both. I received the book he sent today, thanks. With lots of love, Marshall. Marshall would also talk about the people he knew back home, clearly in dialogue with his parents, though we don't have their letters. He'd read the life magazines and books and, that his parents sent, but he didn't talk about work. He didn't want to worry his parents, and such talk would likely have been censored anyway. Most of Marshall Pease's letters are from 1944. My mother, Connie, a little younger than Marshall Pease, was born in Cardiff, Wales, and lived there until after the war. She kept a diary for some years. The earliest was from 1944, five years into the war for her. It has been poignant for me to read what Marshall Pease was doing as a US soldier in Cairo, Egypt, while my mother experienced the war over 2,000 away, miles away in Cardiff, Wales. Like Marshall, my mother only recorded everyday activities, not the trauma of war that she did experience. Cardiff, being a port city, was heavily bombed. I've included a few excerpts from my mother's diaries from dates of historical significance that coincide with some of Marshall's letters. June 6, 1944, my mother, diary. Heard early in the day that Second Front had started. It was D-Day. Tried to swat chemistry in the evening. SWAT meant study in England. <laughs> June 7th, 1944, Marshall, V-Mail. I see where the invasion has started. Sure was good news. Everyone has been waiting for that news. The Allied forces had launched what was the largest amphibious invasion in military history. Five naval assault divisions came to the beaches of Normandy, France. Almost 133,000 troops landed. Where was Marshall Pease, I wondered. The locations represented by the numbered APO addresses were classified during the war, but not later. So I learned that for much of his time in Egypt, Marshall Pease was located at Camp Huckstep, a large military base bordering Cairo International Airport. Later I found an article saying that the Women's Army Corps, also called the WACS, arrived at Camp Huckstep on June 16, 1944, and was assigned to the Middle East Service Command. June 27, 1944, Marshall, V-Mail. Good morning, Mom and Dad. I just got up, and it's nice and cool. I thought I would write letters till dinner time. I know it will be hot shortly. I'm busy much of the time working nights. I received five V-Mail and a letter with the clipping. That was the first in four days. I sure do miss your letters. I hope there's mail today. I've seen the wax and talked with some of them. Lots of them are over 30 and have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> the war dragged on. February 19th, 1945, Marshall, airmail, letter. Dear Ma Mom Dad, I've just finished supper and have time to write a few words. I know every letter I write means a lot to you. I like the place I'm in, the place is swell. Everything one wants, shows, services, club for entertainment, and the air is pure. I thought I would tell you, if I don't write at times, please don't worry, for I'm not, I won't be able to. I don't want you to worry. I received a V-mail today and also two papers. I was pleased to hear from you. Letters sure mean a lot to me, especially from you. I received two le excuse me, letters from Grandma and also clippings. I sure do enjoy reading them. I sure do thank her a million times. I love you both and miss you both. It sure has been a long time since I said, so long, I'll be seeing you. Good night and God bless you both and best of health to all. With love, Marshall. Marshall's comment about I'll be seeing you is likely a reference to that very popular World War II song, I'll be seeing you, sung by Vera Lynn. In April 1945, a local newspaper reported that private first class Marshall R.P.s had sent his parents the following commendation he received, which, rece which reads in part, on behalf of the company officers and your commanding officer, I take great pleasure in expressing to you our appreciation of the manner in which you performed the job assigned to you while President Roosevelt was in Egypt. With your splendid cooperation, the mission which was an honor bestowed us was successfully executed. 
We members of the command are extremely proud of you. April 30th, 1945, my mother, diary, snowed during the day. Everyone except me thinks that the war will be over this week. May 1st, 1945, my mother, Hitler reported to have been killed. Mussolini shot in Milan. May 7th, 1945, my mother, everyone thinks VE Day will be today. May 8th, 1945, my mother, VE Day, Churchill broadcasted street parties to celebrate. We now know that Mussolini was executed on April 28th and Hitler committed suicide on April 30th. VE Day was victory in Europe day. The war had ended in Europe, but the fighting continued in the Pacific. May 11th, 1945, Marshall, female. Dear mom and dad, I've just finished an after dinner nap. It sure is a hot afternoon. <coughs> When I finish this letter, I'll take a cold shower and shave and get ready for work. I have to work tonight. I haven't had any mail for a few days. I guess it's due to VE Day. I sure do miss you all. The war news sounds good in the Pacific. I hope it won't last too long. Things are quiet here and everything's about the same. I'm hoping to get some mail tonight. I sure do miss letters from you. I'm always thinking about you and miss both of you. God bless you all and best of health to all. With love, Marshall. Sometime between mid-June and July of 1945, Marshal Pease left Egypt and began serving in Palestine. August 3rd, 1945, Marshal, air mail. Dear Ma and Dad, I've been very busy, in fact, every day. We have one day a week off. I sure have been away a long time. Two more months, three years away from home. I do hope I'll be back by Christmas, but it doesn't pay to plan in the Army. I was lucky yesterday. I received three of your letters. Letters from you sure do mean a lot to me. Letters are the only way we can talk to each other. This conflict has caused lots of heartaches. In life, we have heartaches and good things. We have to take them as they come. I have found that out. I guess lots of boys will have to go to the Pacific. There's lots of boys never been called yet. They will be going soon. I see where you enjoyed a nice T-bone steak for dinner. I, felt you, I, I bet you felt proud to get it. I guess meat is scarce back home. I'm always thinking about you and have you in my heart and thoughts at all times. God bless you both, and best of health and luck to all. With lots of love, Marshall. On August 6, 1945, the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, and on August 9th, 9th on Nagasaki. August 17th, 1945, Marshall, airmail. It's just 12.30 at night and I have to be up till 6. I'm on duty at present, but things are quiet. The boys are all happy, singing and gay and some drunk, all coming in from town. The celebration we all have been looking for, which is the victory over Japan. And the war is over. I sure am happy and millions of other boys. I know all of you folks back home are happy too. I say I have a good chance to be home by Christmas. I have you both in my heart and thoughts at all times. I love you both and hope to see you for Christmas dinner. I hope so. God bless you both and best of health to all. With lots of love, Marshall. Japan formally surrendered on September 2nd, 1945, ending World War II. The British Aircraft Service had ended on July 31st, 1945, when cheap airmail postage to troops was introduced in early 1945. In the approximately four and, a quarter, four and a half years of the service, over 330 million air graphs were processed. The email service ended in November, November 1st, 1945. The Army reported that 1.25 billion email letters were microfilmed in 41 months of operation. Yesterday was Veterans Day, and I'm profoundly grateful to all soldiers who fought in our wars. Without the World War II soldiers, I probably wouldn't have been born. <laughs> Sorry, emotional. I'm happy to say that Marshall Peace made it home safely, likely by Thanksgiving, 1945. In April 1946, he married his sweetheart, Nellie, started a family, and lived in our valley for the rest of his life. Happily ever after, I believe. The end.